Hey tea heads, this is Don from Mayleaf. In front of me, I have two Liubao teas. If you don't know what a Liubao tea is, then it's a ripened, fermented tea from Guangxi province in China. And I've done a whole video about Liubao teas, so you can go check it out. I'll put a link in the description below. So there are two Liubao teas in front of me. These are both fresh in stock and I wanted to taste them back to back because they're made by the same producer, but there is 12 years difference between them in age. So this one here is from 2021, so pretty fresh. And this one here is from 2009, so 12 years difference between them. Liu Bao tea is basket aged tea, so it's, it's going through a different ripening process compared with ripe pua tea, however, it's similar in the sense that it's stored in a moist environment to allow the microbes on the leaf or seeded within the sort of production area to ferment the tea. So same producer, now of course every batch of tea is different. They're actually from slightly different areas in Guangxi, um, this, uh, these teas. And so it's not a perfect comparison. It's not exactly the same bushes just 12 years later, but same producers, same fermentation style, so it's gonna be there or thereabouts. And what I wanna try and um, understand with these kinds of tastings, and I encourage you to do these kinds of tastings, if you're a lover of tea, you really need to understand the nuances that processing has on the tea to try to figure out the, uh, the effect that aging has on Liu Bao tea in terms of texture, in terms of taste, in terms of aromatics, and potentially in terms of body sensation, although of course that's gonna be almost impossible for me to figure out because I'm gonna be drinking both of them together. So let's take a look at the leaves. So this is a spring 2021, this is spring 2009. They're bro both from the uh, Guangxi Daiyejong variety. The origin, as I said, they're slightly different parts of Guangxi province, but the same producer. Picking on and processing is gonna be pretty much identical because of the fact that it's uh, the same producer and the elevations around 500 meters. You can see that the older one has a slightly more broken up look to it. That's what you'd expect as tea ages. It becomes a little bit more broken, a little bit more fragile. I would suspect that um, it's not just a difference in the look because of picking or fermentation, but is also to do with age. But as I said, no two batches of tea are ever the same. That's why we delight in tea. Um, interestingly, the older one actually looks a little bit lighter to me. The texture is slightly more matte as well. Let's see if I can get a close up here. The texture is, is more, I would say, matte here than this one, but there are thereabouts, a very similar looking tea. Okay, so let's warm these up and let's do our side-by-side -side tasting. I've got my favorite way to do these kinds of tastings, the Gong Fu Solos. So Gong Fu Solo is a small guy one and the tulip cup, and it's just the best way because you don't need a Gong Dao Bei. You can do things very simply, and therefore you can line up five, six, seven in a row, and you can do really, really you know, efficient back-to-back uh, -back tastings or side-by-side -side tastings. So I'm gonna heat up this teaware. I love Liu Bao tea. I think it's one of my favorite ripe tea, uh, ripened teas. Uh, there are quite a few different ripened teas or dark teas. If you wanna know more about dark teas, I'll stick an article um, in the description below so that you can read about uh, dark teas. But uh, I love Liu Bao ripened tea because it's still made in a very sort of small batch way for a lot of the teas that we source. And there seems to be a lot of variation between producers in terms of the fermentation style. And I think that that leads to a lot of diversity in the flavor profiles of Liu Bao tea. And whilst I adore, of course, ripe pua tea, I just find that the uh, that diversity, that difference between the uh, tastes and experiences of Liu Bao is uh, unmatched in ripened tea. Okay, so here we go. Let's have a sniff of the 2021 tea. Now ripened teas normally you would say should be left for at least a year for that wodoi, for that fermentation smell to dissipate so that you've got a tea that is ready for market. And so this is pretty much as fresh as it gets, but of course we selected it because I found that it was really, really 
good and I really liked it. And I should also say very importantly that the price difference between these is big. This one is three times more expensive than this one. So that goes to show the effect that age has on price. So you've got a young tea here. It's going to be very, very affordable. Let's see the difference. The smell on this is wild. It's, it's, it's really interesting. It has a a bracing sort of, um, I would put it into sort of citrus fruits, like a uh, tangerine peel, but it's a little bit more concentrated than, more concentrated than, it's a little bit more purified to like vitamin C and sherbet. So if you uh, imagine like uh, you get like sherbet, I'm talking about sherbet powder, you know, which is essentially ascorbic acid, which is vitamin C. So if you've ever had vitamin C drinks or you've, you've you know, tasted pure ascorbic acid, it's got that very tart, um, acidic sort of quality to it. That's there. I'm also getting a distinct um, fresh clay note. So it's got that, um, as if you've walked into a ceramics studio. So you've got that smell of, of wet clay, um, ascorbic acid or vitamin C. There's also um, a touch of herbals, like as if you've taken some herbs and steeped them in some alcohol. So it's got like a sort of bracing herbal wine quality to it as well. Um, and a slightly savory salted note to it. A little bit creamy. Maybe salted egg yolks, if you've ever had salted, uh, I think this is mostly salted duck egg yolks, uh, and it's commonly used in cooking in the Far East. It has a very particular rich and salty note. So it's salty, it's um, um, tangy, and it's uh, got that clay note, but it's all in the lighter territory. We compare that to the 2009, and I expect a very different experience. Extremely different. Um, the clays are there, but the clays are richer. That so it's you're getting much more of a rich. I don't want to. I don't know if there's, if it smells different when the clay is older, but it 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 smells more aged. It's got a leather leather quality to it. It's got that uh, a betel nut quality to it. It's nuttier. It's 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 a darker in smell. It's definitely more herbal. It's got angelica in the smell as well, angelica root. So the difference between them is quite extreme. From lighter, slightly brighter, more of those sort of acidic, sort of um, citrusy notes and a light clay note to really you're in that ceramics studio and there's the, the herbal sort of wines that we talked about with this one have developed into a sort of a rich, angelica root, betel nut quality. Again, you can take a look at the differences there. Okay, let's give these a rinse. I'm just gonna use this water since it's still warm. Gong Fu Solo Brewing, which is how I do all of my sample tasting, is just an efficient way to do Gong Fu Brewing with a very small footprint. And as I said, you can do multiple teas all together, but you don't have to. A lot of time, in fact, most of my sessions when I'm sort of at the desktop, if I'm working, is literally this, this, and a towel. Just put a towel down, which I don't have right here. Put a towel down, that on top, you're done. Okay, here we go. Let's have a smell of the 2021. Oh my gosh, it's amazing. This bright, uh, um, so now I am getting tangerine, slightly aged tangerine peel. Um, the clay is still there, but it's the brightness, which is so interesting. Um, maybe a bit of, maybe a bit of salted plum. If you've ever had uh, the, those salted, Plums, of, again, a very uh, classic Far Eastern 
uh, thing to eat. I never really liked them. My grandmother did, but they're very, very strong. But it's that sort of savory to tangy quality, which is so unusual, so interesting. And again, why I love Liu Bao teas, because they're just gonna bring about all sorts of a, a, a very interesting sort of tapestry of flavors that you don't get with other ripened teas. Other ripened teas like Pua's, they can have a lot of diversity, but they tend to sort of fall into quite distinct categories. I think Liu Bao is a different experience. Okay, let's take a look at these leaves. They are um, different. Oh my gosh. Oh, like, so different. Um, a little bit of carob. Um, the clay is there, the leather is there. I'm gonna say also suede. So it's definitely got more of that, um, those sort of furnishing smells, if you know what I mean. And uh, it's also got like um, more butteriness. Um, I'm getting Brazil nuts, I'm getting peanut butter. Definitely more nutty and more um, leathery. And again, deeper. Um, so, yeah, I mean, the, the difference that the age has made is, is, is extreme. And the best the overall way for me to say it's moved more into leather and nuts. This one has got that freshness, that brightness, that tangerine quality. There's also like a uh, bread quality to it as well. I would associate it with wholemeal bread. So it's got the, the sort of fibrous husks of the, the wheat, that smell, the, the, the wheat germ, I think it's called. So it's got that wholemeal quality. This one does as well, but imagine that bread has been slathered with peanut butter. Both really, really um, have their own pros and cons and would just sort of suit different moods. This one is definitely more potent in terms of its aromatic uh, fog, but it, it, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's better. This has a bright, light, sort of active quality that is very interesting. Okay, so, uh, yeah, that one goes over here. Okay, let's brew each one up separately. We're gonna brew for about 25 seconds. And we'll see how the taste differs. And the color of the liquor. So we expect, you'd expect that the aged one will be darker. <clears throat> okay, here we go. 2021 Liu Bao. It's great to have young, ripe teas that are really enjoyable because they're such a good price point. They can be your easy drinker and, uh, so your daily drinker, and you can store it and age it and sort of increase the, the, the aged taste as you go. Okay, cheers everybody. That ceramic studio, I'm getting um, a plaster or, or plasticine ceramic, that note, which I really love. I know it sounds weird, but I really love it. I've always loved walking into a pottery studio, that smell. I'm getting that aged tangerine. It has a, a, a Chen Pi quality to it, an aged uh, tangerine or mandarin pill quality. It's got that, um, that, that tangy acidity that comes from that vitamin C, but that dissipates very quickly to a sort of an active um, sweetness that's like, re reminds me of um, like a dark date syrup. Very juicy. None of that um, wet storage taste. And that's one of the advantages, I think, um, with basket fermenting the tea as opposed to you know, uh, the wodoi or fermentation process for ripe pu'er is covering it with lots of water and it, that has a more uh, 
a musky sort of uh, stronger ferment smell that needs to dissipate. With basket aged teas, I think you can bring them to the market a lot quicker. 2021, as I said, so it's two years since fermentation and it tastes super clean, super, super clean. Brown sugar sweetness or the dark dates, but yeah, it's just got a lovely sweet quality. So the the overall flavor profile is that um, clays, salted plums, um, and then a little bit of uh, nuts, um, but light. Maybe like a, a Brazil nut and then um, that tangerine and vitamin C fizziness and effervescence moves to the brown sugar and date sweetness. Really lovely. Smell of the empty cup. Hmm. I'm getting those bready notes, warm sort of rising bread in there. It's very, very uh, strong. There's something else, like a rose hip. So that, again, that fruity tang comes through. Okay, same tea producer, different year, 12 years difference. I expect, as I said before, a darker liquor. We're going to brew it there or thereabouts the same uh, amount of time. The smell coming off those leaves when I put the hot water in is definitely more of those herbal um, age notes. So this is going to come down to preference. You know, you know, what do you feel like drinking? Do you feel like that? And you can see it is darker. Uh, do you feel like, you know, something that's sweet and bright, but still has that, you know, ripened taste? Uh, similar to if you've ever had Autumn Light, uh, which is a, one of our ripe pours, it's got that sort of lighter ferment quality to it. I don't know if it was fermented lighter here. The, the leaves certainly looked like they were there or thereabouts, a similar color, but it has a lighter, more, I would say, mm, fruity, brighter uh, quality to it. Okay, cheers, everybody. Mm. Herbal. Carob, ginseng, angelica, a little bit of, um, little bit of dark chocolate in there as well. Mmm, the color of the liquor is definitely a lot, lot darker, um, and it's sweeter. Okay, I'm getting instead of clay, I'm really getting that sort of fresh soil quality to it. Um, I'm getting the peanut butter, I'm getting hazelnuts, so much nuttier. Uh, the texture is definitely uh, thicker. So this one was medium and had an oily texture. This one is thick and has an oily texture. So the age has definitely thickened it up. It has a, a it reminds me of, if you've ever had red bean soup in China, they have these sweet soups that are, it's, if it's cold outside, they're so nice. You get this hot red bean soup and it's it sounds a bit weird, but it's sweet and it's just, it's it's so comforting. And it's got that starchy carbohydrate sweetness in and amongst the herbs and the nuts. Definitely a richer, deeper, darker flavor. It probably has a bit more sweetness than this one, although this one was very, is very, very sweet as well. Okay, let's brew them up again. And we'll brew them up at the same time this time. Quickly smell the empty cup here. So similar potency, but very different palette. This one is darker chocolates. I'm getting sort of raisins scorched plums, like I, I'm imagining like a plum that's been somehow like just sort of scorched in the oven. So a slight char on it. Um, but yeah, those little currants covered in chocolate. All right, let's see the difference in color visually here. It's great to do back to back tastings. 
one of the most useful things. Oh, the color is not as different as I thought, but it is lighter, uh, the younger one. Yeah, one of the greatest things to do is back-to-back -back tastings. It really is the most educative way to understand the effect of anything. It might be if you're testing clay, teaware, if you're just sort of combining, uh, comparing two, uh, you know, same, same supply, different years, or same year, different suppliers. You know, it's, it's a really, really useful thing to do. Okay, so let's take a look at the color here. You can see that this one is slightly lighter, slightly more sort of chestnutty. This one's more mahogany color. The um, mouthfeel before I drink the young one again of this aged one is very vaporous. So it's not just thicker, it's also more vaporous and it's got that, it's almost got the, the aftertaste of a really good um, whiskey sort of that, that malty, again, more carbohydrate quality to it. So it's got that starchy malt whiskey finish in the mouth with hazelnuts and peanut butters. So nuttier, um, slightly sweeter, thicker, more vaporous, more herbal, more deep. Brighter, um, a little bit more mineral, but in a really great way. Um, fresher. The sweetness and the, the flavor profile is just up a level in terms of um, its brightness and, uh, and definitely has more fruits compared to nuts. Here we go. Second infusion, always a winner. Mm. Amazing. It has, a, it has like a little, um, like, um, I don't know, cherry wine or fruit wine quality to it, as if you've taken a I don't know, a, a, like a light port with a, like a touch of pomegranate. It's really, really drinkable and, you know, uplifting. Oh, amazing and so, so sweet. Like that date syrup, like dark agave syrups, brown sugar, but not like deep, deep, dark brown sugar, but brown sugar sweetness, amazing. Wow, what a tea at such an affordable price point. Highly, highly recommended. If you want that Chinese herbal taste, the, the ginsengs, then combined with those nuts and the leathers, and then um, the carobs and the chocolates. It's just a richer, more indulgent affair. You could say much more of a sort of daytime drink, much more of a nightcap drink, but you know, that's very sort of basic generalizations. You know, it depends on your mood, but highly, highly recommend that you do this back to back because it is remarkable what 12 years of aging difference will do. Albeit, yes, they are slightly different in terms of the area. There's, there's gonna be other factors at play here. It's never gonna be identical, but when you have the same supply, it allows you to do this with a lot, a lot more sort of um, uh, purpose. Quickly smell the, em oh, quickly smell the empty cups again. I would say this, this is like that luxury Liu Bao taste that a lot of people look for. This one, however, is in a way more interesting because it's just so fascinating how you get that effervescence and you get that, that, that fruity quality to it. And the fruit persists here. Yes, I'm getting the sort of brown sugars and, and like a salted fudge note. I'm also getting like golden apples that are freshly cut. And that fruitiness is great. Yeah, no, just vaporous, sweet, sticky um, chocolates and nuts. Let's take a, take a look at those leaves. Now you can see that the older one is definitely, definitely a lot darker. Two Liu Baos, a wonderful back-to-back -back tasting that I highly recommend. I'll see what I can do on the website. I'll probably see if I can work out some bundle price because I really think that you should do this comparison yourself. It's a really 
useful, enjoyable, and educational way to sample your Lubao. That's it, tea heads. Check out our other videos, taste our teas wherever you are in the world by browsing mayleaf.com and come visit us if you're ever in London. Other than that, I'm Don from Mayleaf. Thank you for being part of the revelation of true tea. Stay away from those tea bags, keep drinking the good stuff, and spread the word because nobody deserves bad tea. Bye.